Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Karen Jensen. I am the uh, program manager for uh, Start Blue for this particular program. I'm also with the Radio School of Management. I'm joined by my colleagues from Start Blue, Vanessa Scott, who is our uh, director, Chris Ward, who is our expert in residence and handles our um, mentorship program, and Cannon Purdy, who is our innovation liaison. Um, also today, we are thrilled to be joined by uh, Shane Moise from the Office of Innovation and Commercialization, and he and uh, his guest, Sean and Sarah, are going to speak to us a little bit more about the uh, California CARES grants. Uh, Shane, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you so much. Uh, the California CARES grant is a larger umbrella initiative supported by the state of California and by the University of California. So each of the campuses was eligible to apply for funding, essentially to support the technological advancement from idea or a proof of concept through and out of a lab into market. Um, and this is specifically for technologies as well as policies um, who are led by a UC researcher. Um, and the idea is to have some kind of mitigation or impact on climate change uh, for the state of California. So what's unique about specifically the CA CARES grant uh, is that it supports uh, some student teams in Start Blue. It is meant for faculty-led projects out of UCSD. For, so that means for those who are here today that are from our community in San Diego, it is an encouraging, it's encouraging of a pathway to find and work with UC faculty. So if you're out, you have a startup company, explore our websites, look at, you know, Start Blue, the website, um, SIO, look for faculty who are leading projects or doing research in the same uh, industry or field that you're working in. And there may be a way to connect. Um, so there is the, the grant, and then there's also support for community initiatives and programs. Um, so there is, I don't think the website is here, but I will throw it in the chat for everyone. You can click into it. Thank you, Vanessa. Um, so that's the start blue that UCSDVU, and it has links out uh, to the other opportunities as well. Thank you again, Vanessa. And so please click into those to learn more. One of the especially unique parts about this grant is the relationships with, or rather the fostering of public private partnerships. And so uh, as a part of launching and making this successful, we engage talented and um, productive, impactful industry partners like Sean and Sarah. Uh, so I'm going to actually have them introduce themselves, talk a little bit about what they do and what their involvement is in this grant going forward. Um, so Sean and Sarah, could you introduce yourselves? Happy to. Thanks, Shane. Thanks, everyone. Um, super excited to be here. Super excited about this grant. Um, excited about all the innovations um, yet to be received. Um, we are Sean and Sarah. Uh, Sean Bohegan and Sarah Strauss. We're a brand strategy consultancy. Um, and we say that we are dedicated to preventing Earth from bursting into flame, which is pretty much what we're all doing, right? Like, that's why we're all here together. Um, Individually, we come from, you know, storied careers on both the global brand and creative agency sides. We are very passionate about research and insights, people and culture, major ideas, innovations, behavioral change. Uh, we're always thinking about how we can shift narratives, mentality, culture, um, consumption behaviors. We're solving problems, uh, which is really also why we're all here. Um, I know like when a lot of people hear the word brand, um, they don't necessarily know what to think, especially if you're not working in the space. Uh, but you know, it's so much more, I think a lot of people associate it with advertising. It's so much more than advertising brand is really everything a company is, uh, says, does, stands for, um, how you organize yourself, how you build community around whatever it is you're putting out into the world. Um, you know, you can probably think of a couple of brands that you really love in the world, uh, you know, just as we're talking about this. And really the point of view that we always come with in, in every 
situation with every organization, no matter how big or small, no matter how early or or uh, later in the game we're working with them, is that brand is really one of your greatest tools um, for working alongside your your game changing innovation to make and scale your impact. So it is it is a tool to use to to deepen the impact that you will have on the world with the innovation that you've that you've created. Um so, you know, we're really we're really excited to see what everyone is building. I think, you know, we're looking for um, innovations with very clear intentions, right? So what problem are we solving? Who are we helping and how? Uh, how are we making this world better, healthier, cooler, more harmonious for everyone, more inclusive? Um, you know, so so we want you to be thinking visionary and dare I say ballsy thoughts, right? So like if if your innovation is wildly successful, what will have changed because of your idea, what behaviors will have shifted out in the world? Um, so those are just some of the things that we <laughs> think about. What? Sorry, Sean. I should something. just I should just say it's 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 worth mentioning. Like what we what we're doing here is to be working with the teams of people who have these brilliant world changing ideas and figuring out how to um, very clearly and uh, provocatively articulate those visions, those purpose, those missions, those values, those ideas, and and build the brand around the story we're trying to change in this world, the behavior we're trying to shift. So um, it would be great to Sarah's point, if you're already thinking about what some of those things are, what are your visions for the future? What will have changed because your idea became real? Um, but we're also on this team to be supportive of um, continuing that process and making sure that it's only continuing to further support um, the way your ideas are going to move from your brilliant minds and out into the real world and into the market. Um, so the sharper your story, the earlier, the better, the greater the impact, the more likely to be successful with whatever your business and impact impact objectives may be. Um, but super cool if you're already starting to think about what those things are. Uh, as we as we start this process. Shane, does that help? Did that help? I It, it helps me. Um, and yeah. I think that that info is really useful, both for those who may be attending and have an idea that's that's going to connect with the UC researcher, those who may have an idea for the pro, uh, special initiatives or community program. And I think especially relevant for, for those companies here that are going to apply for the Start Blue track. Um, Great. That these are all insights and advice that are going to help put together more compelling uh, application. So thank you. Awesome. Um, thank and, you. And so then for those that are here, when there is a question time um, that Sean and Sarah are here to, to answer questions. Um, and so just we are, we are all three available. Uh, and so with that, Karen and Vanessa, I'll throw it back over to you. Great, thanks so much, Shane, and thank you to Sean and Sarah for joining us today. Um, so let's get into a little bit more about Start Blue. Um, I've already introduced you to most of our team. Um, also uh, here today is uh, Jordan DiNardo, who is our fellow and interacts a great deal with our uh, teams. Not here today is John York, who is our lead instructor. Um, our program is also, of course, supplemented with uh, many mentors. Um, we have a uh, group of about 40 mentors we pull from for this program, uh, an advisory board of um, 15 community and UC San Diego members who also help support the program. So Start Blue really is, it's an accelerator program. Um, it is a partnership between Scripps Institution for Oceanography, um, where Vanessa is based, and the Rady School of Management, where I'm based. Um, and it really supports a foundation um, to really form and grow in advanced science and engineering startups. Um, this year in particular, we, uh, as mentioned, we are looking to, as always, tackle ocean-focused uh, problems and solutions, um, but also the cli climate adaptation as listed in um, California climate adaptation priorities. There's five of them. So we're looking for 
teams that support those as well. Um, <clears throat> this program was born out of, again, a partnership, but really born from the Start Our Accelerators, which is a program at the Rady School of Management that's been in existence for over 12 years and supports programs um, for diverse founders, um, those who are really working on um, solutions that have a social impact and um, high-tech uh, startups as well. Um, so far, the programs have graduated over 300 startups, um, raised well over $200 million. Um, many of our teams are on their, founders are on their second startup. We've had six exits um, and three of our companies have been funded by the uh, Brady Venture Fund. Um, so a lot of success we, that Start Blue is based on. Um, so the Start Blue method uh, really <clears throat> covers a little bit of everything. So we'll show you a few pictures here, but the training is based on the NSFI core uh, lean startup model. Um, we really provide some hands-on experience and really getting out and getting into the community, participating in events, um, some technical support, again, industry mentors who are invaluable, um, and then some help in really finding the best way to fundraise and support uh, your startup as it grows. Um, so listed here, you've seen uh, several of our program partners. Uh, this program was born out of a grant from the EDA. Um, and <coughs> me, uh, that was the uh, Build to Scale Industry Initiative a couple of years ago for uh, start startup supporting organizations across the United States that um, really are focused on blue technology. Um, so that I will hand it over to uh, Vanessa Scott, our director. Thanks, Karen. Yeah, so as you can see there, and this actually is a picture. So really the program gives kind of the um, entrepreneurial business expertise from Rady side. As you can see here, this is part of our business bootcamp curriculum led by John York, who's there at the whiteboard. Uh, it's a six to eight week program of different kinds of classes talking about um, how to talk to customers, um, product market fit, doing competitive landscape analysis and putting together a pitch deck um, paired with, you know, lectures from all of our ocean leader experts. Um, and we really um, tailor the curriculum based upon the startups that we select in the cohort. So lectures can range from, you know, our ship operations uh, director, Bruce Applegate, talking about the business of shipping and the maritime um, industry to um, aquaculture from, you know, people that know Southwest Fisheries to the Port of San Diego, which we'll show you a picture of as well, talking about permitting and regulatory challenges. Um, Previously, there was the picture from the Blue Tech Incubator space that we partner with Denton's law firm here at UTC. Thanks, Karen. Um, this is an office space that uh, this law firm has basically given to access for our startups and entrepreneurs. We also partner with the Port of San Diego's incubator and TMA Blue Tech um, to share that space. So that's where you can meet with some of your mentors and potential customers. We do plug all of our startups um, into the local Blue Tech uh, uh, ecosystem. So with site visits here, you can see we did a site visit of one of the test pilot sites at the Port of San Diego's Blue Economy Incubator. Um, they have a company called eConcrete that is making um, different kinds of uh, concrete materials to help restore nature-based solutions and biodiversity along the port. And here we took a visit there. The Blue Economy Incubator is an, a really special partner to us too, because they are kind of the next step for a lot of our companies. Once they graduate from Start Blue, if they develop their technologies ready to test in the water, they can apply to be part of the Port of San Diego's incubator. On the next slide, um, you can see the site visit where we took our mentors and our entrepreneurs out to our Scripps Research Pier, where we have a lot of instrumentation and a lot of research is done. Um, and there may be opportunities for testing your own um, uh, prototypes here if you become part of the cohort. There are permitting um, you know, the things that we have to consider with that. On the next slide, you can show, um, you'll see the makerspace here at Scripps, which has lots of um, different um, facilities and, and um, tech development opportunities for to help you with um, developing a prototype. We also have the SOARS, um, which is the Scripps Ocean and Atmosphere Research Simulator um, to do some in-water testing if that's of interest or um, would be applicable to helping you um, grow your development. On the next slide, 
uh, which just kind of demonstrates an example of some of the conferences that we uh, support our entrepreneurs to participate in. This specifically is Ignite 22, which is an event that was up at the port of Los Angeles, all to see, um, and is a like a, an event where it brings together a lot of different investors and companies and government agencies in the blue tech arena. Um, we also have pitch competitions called the Triton Innovation Challenge, um, which happens in the spring to help our startups, you know, they can apply and participate if they're eligible to potentially win some cash prizes and funding for their development. Um, there are many different other conferences and events that we kind of have booths at that we can um, invite our entrepreneurs into to connect with our ecosystem partners to develop partnerships and talk to potential customers and really increase their visibility. Next slide. Uh, and then we culminate the program with a demo day in the, this year it will probably be the end of May um, at here at Scripps um, Forum. That's just a picture of last year. So it's uh, an opportunity for all of our startups that complete the program to share um, more about their, uh, a bit of their pitch and, and their progress through the program and any asks they have of the audience. And we bring together our whole ecosystem of investors and agencies and partners um, that then can ask the, the entrepreneurs questions and have follow-on discussions about potential partnership um, and have lots of opportunities for networking. So this is just an example of some of the things we offer through the program that we connect our entrepreneurs into. Um, so a little bit about eligibility. I know Karen spoke to this a little bit. So because we are uh, funded through a, a federal grant that's trying to build and grow the blue economy workforce in San Diego, Southern California region, we do accept startups as long as they have a base, uh, a foundation in San Diego, um, so that it's not limited to UC San Diego or Scripps or Rady students. Uh, anyone from San Diego, Southern California can apply as long as they have an ocean focused challenge and solution that they're um, in with their startup. Uh, again, this year, because of the uh, California CARES grant, we are also accepting and supporting teams that are aligned with California climate adaptation priorities. Um, we do ask that teams and startups have at least two members um, that can participate in the programming and the programming will run January through June of 2024. Um, teams of one, we just are, are not um, able to support because we do have so much programming and we, we ask that we have at least two team members in uh, each startup. I would say that this program is best suited for early stage startups. Um, and although we have supported mid-stage startups as well, um, you know, we've had uh, startups like CalWave that we're doing uh, prototype demonstrations off of our peer um, and have now grown and they're gonna be doing further testing up at PackWave. Um, but, you know, we uh, really just select the, the best startups from the applicant pool. Um, and then, yeah, obviously the stronger the application, you know, people that have prototypes that have market potential, um, that are obviously having um, solutions to an environmental needs with sustainable business models and approaches um, and have scientific and engineering merit. And obviously we, we always encourage and look for a diverse applicant pool and want to have uh, be, be very inclusive in our cohort and uh, program. Next slide. So what can you, um, what do you know you're gonna graduate the program with? Uh, all of our startups will have a clean pitch deck um, and uh, polished, I would say, presentation skills um, vetted by our, our experts and our mentors. Um, you know, you'll be plugged into our extensive network of program partners um, and investors and government agencies. Um, you know, we can help guide you and pair you with teams of mentors um, to be able to help you advance your technology development and your um, business models and uh, really give you the um, strategies and insights to think about and apply for funding, whether it be SBIR applications and grants, which several of our startups have received, um, or talking to angel investors to get support for their um, you know, those are some of the things that you know you'll be able to get through our program. And yeah, just to wrap, um, so far we've had two cohorts go through Start Blue so far. So we've supported 14 different um, ocean-focused startups. Almost half of them have been founded by women. 
Um, altogether, the group has raised about $8.3 million collectively, and um, they've ranged a variety of different sectors in the blue economy, from clean energy to aquaculture, to materials, um, to security, to carbon emission reduction. You can see the list here. Um, but yeah, we've had many different solutions and startup um, go through. And we look forward to um, answering your questions and yeah, supporting many more blue economy solutions. So I think that was the last slide. Um, I'll stop there and we're happy to open up to answer any questions you guys have. Oh, and you know what, Chris, I'll hand it over to you to, if there's anything you wanna add about the mentor program or anything that we may have missed, I'd love for you to share. Yeah, I think it kind of covered it all, Vanessa. Um, just, you know, we have a we have a pretty deep pool of mentors that we've developed over the past couple of cohorts. And, you know, the process that we we've gone under is, you know, when you come in, we we talk to we talk to both the mentors and we talk to the teams about what what they're kind of looking for, what they have to offer, what the needs are. And then, you know, we try to match them up as best we can with uh, primary mentors and secondary mentors. And, you know, our mentors aren't just like oceanographic technical experts, some of them are, but we do try to bring people in from other industries who have broad business experience who we think maybe can help a particular team in a particular area. So um, yeah, so we, we have the match mentors and we have the network too. So it's it's quite often that we we you know we just find that there's somebody else who could help you with a particular issue. So we you know we we draw from that pool. So it's it's been a really uh, positive component of the program and uh, looking forward to. Uh, using it again in the, the third cohort. Thanks, Chris. All right, I see a question here in the chat from Brian uh, asking, what if there's a team of two members, but one is located in Orange County, will this team still be considered? Uh, I would say yes. I mean, I, I'm assuming that the other person is here in San Diego. I, I know you, Brian. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, you know, I think the commitment that we're looking for is that one, um, at least one, if not two members can be uh, present at the in-person meetings, um, which will be pretty much on a weekly basis um, from mid-January to the beginning of June of next year. Um, and so, um, yeah, I would say that would be considered. And if that doesn't answer your question, feel free to unmute and clarify. And anyone feel free to unmute and to ask a question. Just mentioned too, I had a question come to me in the chat as well regarding the San Diego presence. Um, and Vanessa's already alluded to this as far as the team members being present. Ideally, uh, the startup does not necessarily need to be based directly in San Diego, but it does need to have some sort of a, an impact on the San Diego region or at the very least the greater Southern California region. Um, as we mentioned, we are funded by the EDA. So the goal of this really is to impact the local economy. Hi, um, when would we know uh, if we'd been accepted or declined? It's a great question. So as you know, uh, applications close October 31st. We should finish re the initial reviewing uh, stage by mid-November. And at that point, um, we'll notify those who are moving forward into a, um in-person, um, face-to-face type interview um, with final decisions made around the first week of December. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? There aren't any other questions. I'd love to maybe get introductions from those others that are tuned in to learn more about you and what your potential startup is. I'll pause the recording. I'm, I'm happy to worry about it. 